Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to SilvaCast. If you don't know me, I'm Fred Silva and I'm here to help you to speak English with confidence. No more fear, no more hesitation. Because I believe if I can speak English now, you can do it too. You are intelligent, you are smart. So stay with us because today we are talking about a very interesting topic. We're talking about the fear of making mistakes. Man, this is a very good topic because I know a lot of people, and maybe you are uh, in that situation, are very afraid of making mistakes and maybe this is prevent you to speak English in a better way. So, if you want to speak English with confidence, don't miss this episode. Today, I have a guest from Italy. His name is Rosario. He's a good friend and, and you like him because he has like a good vibe and I hope you enjoyed this episode. And today's episode is brought by Silva Club. Silva Club is my English speaking club and I have something special for you that want to try something new and that want to try a good way to practice your English. My English speaking club normally uh, it costs $7 a month. However, if you join us right now with the link right below, you have the chance to pay only $1 for the first month. This is just for you that want to try and see what's going on and see what's the club and what, how you will learn English there. Not just learn English, but learn how to speak English with comments. Hit the button below. You will arrive in a, in a page and in this page you need to add a special coupon code. It's club1. Put there club1 and apply the coupon code and then you receive the discount. It's going to be a $6 discount. For the first month so you will receive this code and then you can click on add apply the coupon code and then you will see in your own currency you will see the discount so just join us because this is going to be amazing for you but i believe that you love this club but if you don't like it if you think fred this is not for me you can cancel anytime okay so join us one dollar for the first month this is a great deal and i'm waiting for you just click below you see that you just have five minutes to finish this uh, enrollment i'm waiting for you and this is our sponsor for today well and as i said today i have this special guest from italy his name is rosario and man i'm sure you will love him so he is amazing and you can learn a lot from him today you hear this song it's because a new expression or advanced vocabulary is coming and this is a way to learn more from this episode so every time when you see this song just pay attention because it's something new that maybe will help you to improve your english too and let's get started my friends i'm so excited about this guest i'm so excited about this conversation so uh my friend Rosario, it's an honor to receive you here in Silvacast. Welcome and thank you for joining us. How are you doing, my friend? Hi, Fred. I am doing well. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. I'm very happy to share my, my story and to answering to your questions. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. My friend, first of all, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, where you live, what you do. Oh. Tell us everything. Sure. Okay. Okay. This is Rosario from Italy. I live in uh, in the south of Italy, in Naples. I'm a software engineer. I work for a company located here in my hometown. I'm 44. I have two wonderful daughters, and I have a bunch of hobbies like reading, photography, and well, a lot of hobbies. I, I like wow. video games, for example. I like oh. 80s video games, the old one. <laughs> oh, this just, is just the, the, I don't know how can I say that, but the, the first then, of video games that was developed. So you are like nostalgical, right? Nostalgical yeah, person. exactly. Yeah. I also Thank made 
um, an old cabinet um, arcades machine. Do you remember the uh -huh. old one with many games inside? I love to uh -huh. spend time with my daughters there and teaching them the right things, <laughs> the right video and, games. And they have a lot of fun, I, I, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's great, that's great. So Rosario, you live in Italy, you are living there, you was born in there. Why English? Why did you decide to study English? What was the reason? Well, the answer, uh, it's simple. I, first of all, I, I love English. I love the, the American culture, the, the British culture. And, and I also think that English is a key language. Because one of my hobbies is to travel. I love traveling the world. I think that English is really important for me because I I could I could be uh, independent without asking always uh, things to others, and I feel the um, uh, how can I say the the liberty to express myself without any. Uh, frustration, any any doubts. This is one of the reasons. Maybe let me say that this this was the the main reason because I started to learn English. Because I'm I'm working here in in, Ita in Italy with Italian clients. I really don't need English in my job. It's just something that I do for for fun, like a ho a hobby. Yeah, exactly. But I think when you travel, you use English, right? When you travel yeah, sure, to sure. other places. Yeah. How is uh, it this experience for you? Like, you know, to be in another country that's not uh, your native language, that's not English, and, and you can use English because you don't know their local language. How is this an experience for you, like to be in a situation like this, traveling? Yeah, okay. That's a good question. One of the yeah, the, one of the reasons because I started to learn English was during um, a travel that I made in the twenty twenty two in the summer. I spent some days abroad as every every summer, and I was there with my family and we and we met some friends that live in uh, in Sweden, and during a dinner. <laughs> They start to speak in English, and I, I, I said to myself, "Well, I can do it. I can start to speak with them." But after a few sentences, I, I feel stuck. So I realized that um, it was uh, something that I, that I had to, that I had to improve, and. The feeling was of oh, um, how can I say anger more than um, the shame, frustration, I, for sure. the frustration, yeah. And so um, even because I start, yeah, I studied English for many many years, many, many maybe twenty, twenty two, twenty three years, and it was unacceptable for me, the idea that I was there and, and I wasn't able to speak with them. So, <laughs> okay. Um, you, you said yeah. that you start to speak in English and you got uh, stuck, stuck. Exactly. But what was the reason? It was lack of vocabulary or what, what did happen that you got like that? Okay. Yeah, that is another. That's another good question. Um, the the fear to make mistakes, because <laughs> I'm a kind of perfectionist. You know, my job is working on code, and you it's it's a scientific job. So when you start to coding, you have to be perfect. <laughs> you know? oh, no. And that was my big problem in the beginning. I. I didn't want to make mistake. <laughs> you know, I, I asked this because uh, our audience here, um, they had the same problem. They know English for a long time. Uh, some of them mm -hmm. uh, study English for 20 years, but they still have this uh, afraid to make mistake. Like 
I can't make mistakes. I can't make mistakes. And this, I think this is one of the things that, uh, you know, get them more uh, stuck to speak the language because they know a lot of things. Of course, it's not perfect. Like my English is not perfect. But when you just, uh, you know, switch your mind, trying to avoid this uh, afraid to make mistakes. I don't know, but something magical happens in our brain that we start to speak English. So you mentioned that you are afraid to make mistakes at that time. So how did you develop this courage to speak English? Because right now you are speaking in English in a really good way. How did you change that, uh, that feeling? Yeah, uh, the, um, the first step is to embrace your mistakes. <laughs> no way. You have just to accept them and learn from them. Uh, you know, even now, when I, while I'm speaking with you, I know that I'm making mistakes, but now it's different. I know that, that mistakes are useful to, to, to go ahead. To, to improve. Um, this is the first step. And uh, another, another thing that helped me was the, um, the fact that I started to um, um, to talk with people um, in, a, in, in, a, in a great community without any fear of make mistakes uh, or feel uh, judged you know it's really important that people that are with you are um can i say um can help you while you are feeling um problems while you're speaking because the um, an a supportive environment could could be the difference when you start to speak. I don't know yeah, if I, you, you got yeah, it. Yeah. I agree with, with you. I totally agree. I, I normally say to everybody, you need to be in a, in a community that uh, there is no judgment. There is no people that will uh, say something bad about you, about your English. Because, you know, especially at the beginning, if you uh, don't have confidence and you are in an environment that people... Uh, point the finger and say, mm, your English is not, is not good, you are making mistakes, that environment is not going to help you to, to improve because you will uh, have lack of confidence and confidence is everything when it comes to English. But when you are in a community, when you are in, a, in an environment that people are there just to support, to support you, just to help you to improve, and you, as you mentioned, you can embrace your mistakes and then you 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 get comfortable at that at that place, so you know that you can express yourself in the best way you you can, without fear to be judged or or things like that. So, community is one of the best things we can do when you are learning English, and I'm proof of that because my confidence was developed uh, by being in a in a community like this, and when you have the chance to just express yourself without, yeah. you know, any any worry about, you know, judgment or about mistakes or about everything. I think, as I mentioned, something magical happens in our brain that, you know, we start to speak uh, English or other languages easily. So, yeah, I totally agree with you. I think this is uh, an important key. Absolutely. So, Rosario, uh, what was your biggest challenge uh, since the beginning? Like uh, you mentioned that you you are afraid to make mistakes, but that was the main uh, thing. Or did you have another challenge that you faced in the in the past that you overcome? Well, was the um, the listening skills. I was really really bad when I when I didn't understand people speaking. Uh, especially native speakers when they speak they speak fast and they use some slangs and so i a started lot, a lot of yeah. slangs. <laughs> a lot not of just slang. some 
<laughs> they use connected speech, so uh, that is something that I don't have in my language. In my in, in Italian language, uh, we don't have the connected speech. Every single word is spelled in the same way. So that was the first. Okay, every single word is pronounced in Italian. In English, sometimes we don't pronounce a few exactly. syllables or uh, words, right? Yeah, um, they usually, in uh, the American ones, usual, usually tend to uh, stress the words that uh, uh, bring, um, uh, how can I say, um, the meaning. More emphasis? I I mean the the meaning of the the sense that they want to say. So function function words in general are not pronounced like uh -huh. I don't know and or for uh, prepositions. Usually it's I know it's what not you mean. Cool. Yeah, they focus in the most important words in the sentence. Exactly. Is that to that words like for example and or or. They speak, uh, sometimes yeah. they, they speak, uh, they don't speak the, that words very, how can I say, it's not, it's not possible to perceive they are pronounced because they speak very fast because that are not the more important words in the sentence, right? Yeah, well, it always depends, yeah, uh, it depends by the, the meaning that they want to, to give to their sentences. And so for this reason, uh, <laughs> When I when I listened in the past many uh, TV series like I don't know let me say Big Big Bang Theory the famous one or Friends uh, when I listened to the dialogues from the TV series uh, I said oh my god <laughs> it's impossible to understand <laughs> and while um, working on the uh, on my listening skills. I um, on the connected speech, uh, I started to uh, percept the sounds and meanings and the things that I never heard before. <laughs> and that was great. That was the my one of my goal in the beginning of this adventure. And <clears throat> and I can say I, I can say that after um in three months, I started to understand them, let me say, 70% of things that I, yeah, it was a great, great uh, achievement so, for me. What did you do to achieve that? Uh, what, what was your main activity or yeah. approach? Um, yeah, first of all, I um, put on my... Uh, my laptop, some uh, some series like I told you before, uh, Big Bang Theory, without any captions. Start I started to just listen the first time, and and I tried to understand from the context, words and meaning of <clears throat> the the dialogues. After I re-listen for the second time, and I try to to write all the words that I, um, all the things that I, um, that I have, that I have understand. Uh, while at the end, just at in the end, I um, re-listened for the last time with captions and I started to recognize the words that I didn't catch in the beginning. So that was really um, effective like work because i uh, realized that <laughs> i knew that words but the, the fact that they started to connect them with other words um make me make my work so hard <laughs> and yeah this is what i i have done for three months now i can understand them with uh, without any captions well i can understand all the words of course it's impossible maybe even for a native speaker um because you know there are different lengths in the 
for example, British people don't understand many words from American people and vice versa. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny because I I use the same strategy to training my my listening skills and of course my vocabulary expression connect speech. Uh, I love Friends, the series Friends. I love it, and I use uh, the, this series to study. I do the same. I watch it without subtitles the first time. I I get just a, a short clip, like one minute, two minutes max, and I watch it without subtitles trying to understand as much I can. So I I go back to the to the beginning again, watch with with, with, with subtitles, and then I take notes about the words that I, that I don't know or that I didn't recognize. And then I watch it again. Uh, and then I do it, I do it for you know three or four times. And it's unbelievable because you know after those, uh, after to watch, you know, three or four times the same, uh, mm -hmm. the same thing, we understand everything. Like it's everything is here. We can remind uh, the dialogue everything. So I have a, I have a English speaking club, and I do the same with with, uh, with the students there. Uh -huh. So it's incredible. I ask them how much you understand the first time you 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 watch. Uh, people say, oh, 50%, 30%, not more than 50%. And at the end, when they watch a few times and when the, I point the, the vocabulary and everything, they said, I understand everything now. Wow. Everything's clear. So it's, a, and they, you know, they have fun because the series is very, very funny. So I have studied English for a while using the same strategy and it's, really really good i i love it because it's funny you you understand in a natural way and you never forget yeah sure also because you um you are learning while you are having fun and this yeah. is the best thing <laughs> you repeat a lot of times too uh, the re repetition is the key to to remind things later so we we repeat a lot of times so I don't know about you, but I watch in, you know, without subtitles in Portuguese, the subtitles in Portuguese, and later uh, with subtitles in English. And then I watched again without any subtitles. And yeah, then so I shadow, you... I shadow okay. the episode too. So your technique is to shift between the two languages, right? No, 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 I, I don't. First time without subtitles. Second time, if I don't understand, I put subtitles in Portuguese. Uh, only if you don't understand. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I watch with, with subtitles in English and then without subtitles again, just to okay. see how much I can understand. It's really funny. So, and how about now, my friend? Uh, you said that you had this challenge in the past, like listening skills was hard. Right now, you, you solved that problem. What are your challenge now? What is your challenge now about English? What you were, because I know because I still have my challenges, so I know that uh, it never ends. So just change. So how how it's yours now? Well, uh, now I'm I'm living I'm living a little drama <laughs> with my English. Do you know the um, expression intermediate plateau? Mm -hmm. Have you all ever heard about it? Yeah, I feel that now I'm in that situation because I'm uh, I reached a good level in English but I feel that I'm not making progress and now I'm trying to uh, concentrate myself on the grammar pillar that is really is one of the most important maybe in the beginning no when you start to speak you don't have to care about grammar you just need I agree. things but now when i want to express myself i feel that i miss something so conditionals for example are <laughs> are something that i really need to uh, to study to to improve because in uh, italian language we use subjunctives 
uh, and they are formed in uh, in a totally different way from the English one. So I need to stop to translate from Italian to English, and I need to um, use them in the automatic way. So <laughs> I for the next month I I'm going to to study grammar. I want to make um, an action plan um, for achieving this this goal. <laughs> yeah, uh, and this challenge, uh, Rosario, is not just you. Every single uh, English learner experienced this once in life. For example, with me, at the beginning, I my English was like boom, like I I, I go from yeah. zero to speak English very fast. I got like, wow, I am, I'm intelligent. So I, you know, you, you get very happy because you- I'm unstoppable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you see, I, I can do everything. So, exactly. and all of a sudden you feel like your English is not improving anymore. You feel that you are making the same mistakes again and again. So we start to feel like I am done. I am, oh, what's, what's happening? And this happened with every English student or not in, in English, but in, Spanish, for example, I experienced the same thing, but this is normal. Uh, and you were doing something, but it's you're really, doing it's really difficult to accept, yeah. you know, because you, know. uh, you also feel like a kind of regressions. You start to, to use more pauses when you speak and maybe because your brain start to, um, <laughs> um, to put all together and 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 you uh, when you speak you are slower than before mm -hmm. and this is something that i really hate but i know that it's a it's temporary process problem. yeah <laughs> I, I also now for example while we are speaking i'm learning something from you um so i i mean the Learning process is something that you, that go ahead, and these are only uh, feelings that we had. Yeah, and uh, I I see that that you are doing the same thing I did uh, with my English when I got at that uh, plateau. What I did was I decided to focus in something specific because I was uh, learning English, you know, learning vocabulary, learning expressions idioms, learning, you know, how to speak English like a native. I was learning everything. All of a sudden, I noticed that my English was not improving anymore. And then I I recognized what was the problem. And I, I noticed that my problem is, right now, is pronunciation. So I decided in 2023 to focus exclusively in pronunciation. And I noticed that my English started to to become better again like uh, i i jump again from that point that i was to another point and you are doing the same thing you notice that grammar is a is a problem for you right now you decide to focus on grammar and study grammar more and more so I, I think this, <laughs> yeah i think th this is is the solution to not sure. avoid that this intermediate uh plateau but overcome it yeah exactly so great yeah. job, my friend. You're doing a great job. And I, I noticed that we have a similar path in English. Like we are, we have the same issues. We have the same problems and we are taking almost the same actions to, to overcome that. And tell me something, Rosario, how about your family? You said that you have two daughters, two daughters. Mm -hmm. And how are their relationships their relationship with English. They they would like to speak, they study English. How this, because I'm asking this because at home, my son see me speaking in English. He wants to speak in English too. So it's like, uh, I don't know, he get motivated about it. He gets motivated yeah, about it. Yeah. yeah. How about well, yourself? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, well, uh, I, 
with my two daughters, we usually uh, try to speak in English. Um, the elder um, is B1. Is already B1 because she she are doing um, an English course, the the Cambridge course, and we usually have small conversation to practice. With the little one, <laughs> we usually sing together songs or uh, reading some books. The last one was the doctor was by the Doctor Seuss. The, um, mm -hmm in socks <laughs> we read it together and it was really funny <laughs> we had a funny moment together we have a lot of fun while with my wife it's a little bit hard because she's a teacher an italian teacher in the primary school here in italy uh, she can say some words in english but it's that she don't want to speak in English. <laughs> she can understand, but they usually stay apart when we <laughs> when we have a yeah. conversation. I I will say that you need to have a reason to study a language. Uh, not just a reason, but a strong reason. If you have a strong reason to study it, you have the you know. You know what? What it takes. You know what yeah. we. We like travel, as I told you before. And she always says, but I have two. I have you that you can speak English. <laughs> My wife say the same. <laughs> so why I have to speak? Why, why I have to, to learn English? <laughs> I, I talk to my, my wife and I say, for example, uh, I'm studying Italian now because I would love to visit uh, your country. And I also speak Spanish and English. So I talked to her, when we travel to another country, I won't translate to you. You need to learn the, the language because I want, I want to be the translator. <laughs> yeah, so we need to have a reason. I think if you don't have a strong reason, uh, uh, we don't have motiva motivation to stay. So how about your, your daughters? They, uh, they get like... Uh, motivated they like to study or they feel like it's just uh, obligation that i have no um, they really like english i al always uh, see them uh, watching tv in english they are so happy to practice english they also are studying english in a funny way as i told you before it's the best way they make some um uh uh, I'm going to say community activities together when they study in the course that I mentioned before. So they are so, so smart to understand that English is important and they are learning it in the right way. They don't opinion. think it's an uh, obligation. They just, yeah, it's a exactly. funny thing to do. So the best way to, to learn, by the way. And I always uh, underline them that it's the uh, it's important it's a key language if they want to um, to go abroad in the future to work or for whatever it's really important to know english maybe also other languages um, there is the spanish english that is most spoken uh, i think also chinese language but at the yeah. moment english is the key language and that is going to be uh, proud of them, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I th and you know, kids, they have, uh, you know, they have uh, a special thing that we don't have anymore because we are in the, our 40s. They have time, they have the resources, and they are familiar with technology that uh, of course, we are also, but they have more facility to use the tools and everything to to Games. learn a new language. Yeah. Games for sure, yeah. They they have uh, because for example, when I was uh, eleven as as my son, I didn't have access to English any anywhere because we we didn't have internet at that time. Like, uh, so how can I be exposed by English? If all the movies was in Portuguese, they translate the movies to Portuguese. 
we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have social media. We didn't have anything about this. So I start to study languages after my 30s. Mm -hmm. So the memory is not the same. You know, we don't have a lot of time. So right now, it's so much more easy to, to learn a new language. Uh, but still, uh, everybody can. So even people that are not young anymore, like uh, I, I know some uh, a lady from Spain. She started to study English after <clears throat> her 60s. Like no oh, reason to study. <laughs> and she was there learning. But she said, I am learning to help my son. So, you no, know, a good reason to. You know that... Uh... Learning a new language is another way to um, uh, to face the uh, the problem that people are in the old age, like memory, uh, Alzheimer, and things like that. Loneliness, loneliness sometimes because they don't have they don't have people around to talk. So if they exactly. make friends outside, they they can speak English or in another language. So yeah. I think this is a, is a good thing for for people in, in that age too. You know, yeah, it, could prevent is, other other kind of problem with your memory. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm passionate about languages, but uh, and I think that you know it's good for everything. Fred, I have a question for you. How many languages do you speak? <laughs> uh, only three: Portuguese, Spanish, and English. Oh wow. The next one's going to be Italian. And I, I start to study Italian. You're and, welcome. Yeah. You know, I have many friends in, in Italian now. I have you. I have other friends that live in Italy too. And, you know, Italian, it's, uh, the language is beautiful. People are very friendly. The country is unbelievable, beautiful. So, and as I mentioned, I want to visit Italy one day. So I need to prepare myself because I don't want to visit a place without speaking the language, you know, I think this is, is important for me. So, and Italian is close to Portuguese. I think it's not like that hard. So, yeah. for example, my son decided to start to study Polish. Man, it's mm. incredibly wow. difficult. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a friend there and she has a, a son. They start to speak in English and, you know, the mm -hmm. way they can. And then he starts to study Polish for himself. So it's a good thing. Hard to, to you know, to learn, but, you know, he is smart. He can do it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So my friend, uh, tell me something. Uh, and thank you for the question. I like the question. Uh, what's your dream, you know, related to English or related to other things? What's your dream that you think that you, you will achieve? So, and you want to achieve, you have the, this desire. So please let me know. Uh, regarding English or it in general? Be. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'd like to express myself in the, in the most freely way possible. And as I told you before, I have to manage to mastering the rules of grammar to do it. <laughs> But I'm already uh, happy with my English because I wasn't able to speak just one year ago. So uh, my ago? dream uh, was September 2022. Wow. Mm, let me say one. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. September 2022 when I when I visited the uh, the Sweden as I told you before. So um, yeah, my my dream maybe is to sure to express myself without any um, without thinking in Italian before because I'm still translating uh, sentences from my uh, native language to English. Sometimes uh, I don't I, feel I don't think so. I don't think so because you're speaking with me right now. You don't have time to think in Italian now. Uh, you answer the questions very quickly. I don't think you would still uh, think in Italian before to talk. Maybe difficult words or 
expression that you don't you are not sure about the the how can you use it but i don't think you are thinking in italian right now am i right uh i don't know <laughs> it's maybe it's natural to you you don't you, you you don't recognize that you stopped to translate in your head maybe you don't just rec recognize that because you know you know the, you, is it sorry go ahead <laughs> No, no, I, I was just saying that if you translate in your head, it takes a lot of time to, to speak. So you, you're not hesitating. So I don't think you are translating anymore. Well, you know what? Um, this path is really, is like a roller coaster. We said this a lot of times. <laughs> Maybe sometimes I can just speak uh, fast, um, other times not. Today is a good day, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and yeah, maybe because I'm here with you, you are a friend, and I really feel comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I, I feel that I, um, that I think too much before <laughs> saying something. <laughs> and I don't like the idea that people can start to... Um, become bored, waiting for something that I have to say. No, this is an idea that um, I really hate and I want to work on it to, to improve this aspect of my, uh, of my English. That happened to me when I am like tired or when I'm not in a good mood. So when I'm speaking English and it's not a good day for me, sometimes I my thoughts are very slowly and and i can i can't speak in a good way but i know that when i am like that i need to avoid you know to have a, a important conversation or something in english because i won't perform in a good way because i'm tired or i'm stressed or something so it happens i think it, it happens yeah, sure <laughs> Same and Rosario, be before we leave uh let me know something if you could give, I ask this to everybody that I, I interview in this podcast. Maybe you already saw this question mm -hmm. uh, to one of my guesses. So if you could give one of one piece of advice to my audience, people that are stuck right now, they are like you or were in the past, like they are afraid to speak, they are afraid to make mistakes. What you should say to them? Just one piece of advice. Well, it's simple to say, don't think about making mistakes. I can understand. It's it's really simple to say, but you can say, well, how can I how can I do that? It's simple. You have just to embrace your mistakes. Uh, speaking with people um, that you love, maybe starting from your. Uh, why not your daughters, your son, or your your friend, or maybe just uh, trying to um, to speak to yourself, recording yourself, listening to yourself, like you like you were the your best friend, <laughs> and maybe starting from these little things, you can. Go ahead and having conversation with other people, uh, maybe in uh, in a good community like the one that we know, Fred. <laughs> or and, and yeah, this is my piece of advice. Just starting to speak maybe with yourself or with a friend, and embrace all your mistakes. I'm after one year. I. Uh, I'm doing a lot of mistakes, but who cares? It doesn't matter. It, it's, it's important to uh, to say what we want to say, not in the perfect way. And this is not a big deal, right? I love what you said. Thank you for your great answer. I personally think that mistakes are our best English teacher. If you we embrace the, our mistakes and we learn from them, Man, nobody can stop us because we know that we are strong enough. That mistakes can build our confidence uh, when you, 
when we decide to do that, when you decide purposely, uh, don't care about the mistakes, but you know, don't care about mistakes. Not that I will make mistakes and I won't, you know, don't care any about anything. Of course, you you make mistakes, but you need to be uh, humble to know. Okay, I made a mistake. What I can learn from that mistake, and then you can build your your confidence, your English, and everything. So, great answer. Thank you so much for your answer. And thank you so much for the great conversation, my friend. I love it. You are an incredible person, an incredible English learner. And thank you so much for accepting my invitation. So if you want to say something else, please, uh, you are free to do it. I want just to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, it was another great opportunity to practice together. And maybe we helped someone to... <laughs> So with, with our tips, with uh, with with our um, suggestions, and yeah, only this. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rosario. And guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please hit the button below, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up as well. So, and I'll be waiting for your comments. So please comment below the video. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful week and see you soon, my friends. Take care. See you there. Bye-bye.